The time has come for my people to go. I'm not a queen, I'm a servant of the people. I'm not a king, I'm a servant of the people. It's what the people demand, and we're gonna keep fighting till we get that land. I'm not a queen, I'm a servant of the people. I'm not a king, I'm a servant of the people. It's time to rise to get what we want, we got to organize. Hello everyone, it's Jesse and I am here with the All African People's Revolutionary Party alongside with my comrade Jeffrey. And for those of you who do not know and who are not familiar with the AAPRP, we were founded by Kwame Nkrumah in 1968. Our objective is Pan-Africanism and we define that as a totally liberated and united Africa under scientific socialism. And today we're gonna to talk about the importance of youth wing in organizations, and I'll give it to Jeffrey to get into our ancestors who we will honor today. Yep, yeah, in every episode, you know, uh, you know, we, we like to honor each one to two of our ancestors. Uh, this episode, we're gonna honor uh, Sophia Bukhari. Uh, she was actually a member of the uh, Black Liberation Army and the Black Panther Party. Um, she also was a co-founder of the Jericho uh, Movement for Political Prisoners. Um, yeah, she did a lot of great work in relation to the political prisoners and just uh, the entirety of the African liberation. Um, and then the other uh, ancestor I'm dedicating this to, which I know a lot of you guys are familiar with, is Patrice Lumumba, um, who was actually the first prime minister of uh, the Congo, um, well, known as formerly as the Democratic uh, Republic of the Congo uh, as well. And, um, you know, he was the leader of the, uh, the MNC, which is the... Um, the Congolese National Movement, uh, which is a political party, obviously, that he was spearheading there. Um, for those who probably already know, um, you know, he's a Pan-Africanist uh, socialist, and uh, he was actually murdered um, as well in cold blood uh, by the Belgian government. So uh, we'd like to honor those two ancestors. And, uh, and yeah, glad you guys are joining us and looking forward to getting to this topic. So I guess uh, one of the first things we could just start, start with is just asking, you know, I guess, what role does the, the youth play in organizing and the, I guess just the overall importance of, of the youth wing? The first thing I'm going to say is the children are our future. <laughs> it's, it's cliche, <laughs> but it's true. You know, like we, under, we understand that the children are the future. And just thinking about this topic, I was reminded of all of the revolutionaries who started out young, from Shea Guava to Kwame Ture, Martin Luther King, Malcolm X. I mean, everybody has been young folks. So it's not like we can't do it as young people. I, I think there's a lot of stigma attached to revolution and organizing political ideology. I mean, a lot of youth, for whatever reason, in this day and age, we have all this technology. The internet is free for everybody, it seems, but yet nobody can read a book or understand the importance of why everything is political and how we have to dissect that and fight the system. So um, I just think we have a breadth of ancestors and even current people right now I'm doing work. Um, so it's not like we can't do the work because we got a lot of people to look at who's done it throughout the years and that's been uh, constantly committed to this fight. So, I mean, those are just a few things that come to mind. Yeah. And, you know, like you said, the children are the future, literally, uh, you know, I know it's cliche and everyone hears it and it's just like, Oh, you're just, you know, saying things that everyone else says, but no, nah, it really is, 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 in this case, you know, it's really a thing that we need to adhere to because, you know, obviously you're organizing, you know, if you just stick to, you know, people who are within a certain age bracket, those people are eventually going to get older and, you know, they probably won't be have the facilities or the capabilities to do certain tasks that the youth may be able to. And then also too, just to be honest, like when the older you get, you know, more times than not, the more out of touch you get with the youth because you're not young, you know, you're not, yeah. you, <laughs> you know, hopefully you're not hanging around, you're not like, you know, 60 hanging around like 12 year olds and 14 year olds right. and, and stuff, right? Like, right. obviously, you know, you're going to hang around people your age group, I would imagine. So, um, you know, you need that youth to give you that, okay, you need to get in touch with, with what's going on. And I think, you know, what Kwame Nkrumah says and the CPP is like, you know, try to adhere to is like utilizing all components of uh, society, the revolutionary aspects of those societies, right? Or revolutionizing and politicizing those every aspect of of, uh, of the societies as well, because um, you know right now uh, you know Africans you know, throughout the diaspora on the continent whatever we lack uh, you know um, disunity and also lack of political education. 
So, you know, there's going to be a political education process, but, you know, just take those elements with each sector. Um, obviously, I think the core basis is, uh, as in Krumis, we understand that the core basis is the working and, and poor class, right? People, uh, the peasantry people. So, um, and then also the youth uh, within that. So, um, Fred yeah, Adams. I think that's, yeah, Fred, yeah, yeah exactly. Like just I mean, how he spoke to the youth. I mean, in the very, he spoke to just the plain terms of, in which everyone understood. I um, mean, I think that's what needs to be highlighted, um, just to highlight all the things you said. I mean, all those good points. We can't act as if it's not been done when you have organizations that have dedicated their lives to this. And it's not like, as you say, like if you're older and you're not in touch with the youth, you might think that, oh, they're doing something different in my generation. It's like it's not really that different. It's just transformed, like it's converted into a new thing. I mean, the system is very well aware of how to manipulate tactically and to create this division. I mean, there's a lot of division created to assume that the youth and older folks don't have nothing in common, but I've learned a lot. I've always been told I was an old soul, even as a kid. I've always liked being around um, just intelligent conversation, something that would engage further. And I think most folks don't have the opportunity to um, explore that. There's silence really early, you know, um, just to not engage these conversations when it does no service to our revolution if we're not incorporating, as you mentioned, it's the People's Party. So that's all people. I mean, from very rain, various ranges of uh, age, whatever, you know, just getting through with that political education. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, it's like, it's like you said, man, we just need to utilize all, all parts, um, all functions of our society because it's useful. You know, as much as even um, the bourgeois, you know, we, we <laughs> denounce them and their ideologies. You know, those people sometimes could commit revolution, uh, class suicide, right? Or um, they could they could be aligned with the party. And you know, we there's historical presidents in some elements within the bourgeois who, because uh, ideally, you know, um, not ideally, but historically, Castro came up in a household that was like bourgeois, quote unquote, mm-hmm. right? His dad was rich, right? Um, we had a lot of, you know, had a lot of money and and wealth that was attained through, um, you know, having a sugar plantation, so. So, yeah, so I think that could be, and then also obviously the youth. And I think one thing we could probably use is just talk about like, um, you know, different youth wings. Like I know the snake, snake was actually like, uh, you know, you could kind of call them more or less a, a youth wing of the SELC, which is Southern Christian Leadership Conference, uh, which is spearheaded by Martin Luther King. I know Ella Baker had a big part in that as well um, into telling Martin like, okay, like we need, uh, we need to get the youth involved in the struggle um right. as well and you look at even on the continent uh you know with the cpp the convention people's party with crime and um the pdg so forth so on they have you know paigc they have youth youth wings and that's that's what's actually going to sustain you too as well because once again once the elders get older and they're you know they can't do certain things they're not tapped in with the youth um the same way you know the likes of me or jesse or whoever is then you know we could take over and that's to me and him are going to get older one hopefully inshallah yeah, like exactly. you know we get, <laughs> you know, we get yeah, old, we live enough, we live long enough you know uh the state don't come after us and nothing like that or if they do then hey i guess that's what it is but <laughs> i even think um, of the work the all african people revolutionary party has done with uh yeah. kwame uh Ture going to college campuses a lot of the speeches you know we've watched have been him having recruiting sessions on college campuses i mean that's one of the reasons um, because the youth, you know, again, there's just not that great divide. We have this information at our fingertips. And I think there's just been a lot of division created to bypass that. So it feels just like, oh, that's that's their, that's their generation. Like, we don't have to do nothing about it. But we are the living grandkids of grandparents and great-grandparents that have endured even harsher conditions that we may not be experiencing now, but we have the neo-colonial aspect. Um, and there's a lot of, you know... Um, propaganda given especially to the youth for us to feel like we have to constantly buy things and just engage into further exploiting through consumption Um, and it's not like that relationship can't be examined I always think it's funny when we look at those times of even times of back in the day of the 30s and 40s you know everything was black and white and it just seems like it was that long ago like there's that distinction but then with technicolor reality it's like we see everything in living color but those systems are still oppressing those systems are even getting even harsher, um, but there's just so much uh, confusion created to divide that uh, that line of organizations that have understood the importance of talking to youth. Uh, you know, and I gotta give a shout out to Mr. Rogers because I know 
Jamila, I feel like I read Jamila loves Mr. Rogers, and I love Mr. Rogers too. Anyone who is familiar with Mr. Rogers, you know, he talked to the youth, he talked to children rather, in a very adult way. He talked to them just like human beings, not like talking down to them. He talked to them on their level. Um, and they understood that. And that's why I think a lot of people resonated with him and can resonate with anyone who's able to speak to somebody and engage them basically, you know, without this pretense, without this, this uh, assumption that they can't understand or saying, oh, you know, barring children from having these adult conversations, children should know. In fact, I just saw a video um, of a kid explaining, I'm not sure the context, but he was explaining capitalism to his teacher or somebody. And it was very like, wow, it's like kudos to his parents or whoever, his guardians, because it was very, it was just another example. And I've even seen that because even as a child, I was the type, you know, in my Sunday school, I was going against what the uh, Sunday school teacher said, if it didn't align to some truth of what I assumed the Bible was actually practicing. So, I mean, it's important to just understand that that can be done and we shouldn't silence that. We shouldn't refrain from um, talking with the youth and understanding what's connecting them to what they're being connected with, because that's going to give us an insight to how the system is using its propaganda machine to further exploit and divide us. Yeah, and that, that those are this is really great points, man. Because I've encountered people who've um, you know who told me at a young age they were able to get uh, you know have family members that were organizations and that their elders passed the information to them and they got involved in organizations. So I think that's the that's the importance of just in general, like you know, transferring that knowledge and you know someone in someone having someone in the family who's been in there or someone uh, close to you that's been in the organization kind of helps lead. The path for the next generation, right? Um, in a sense, and I, I think another point you made great, uh, great point of earlier is that maybe we should dive in a little bit further. Is like you know some of those uh, quote unquote frictions between like the elders and the uh, the youth sometimes <laughs> with them parties or just in general too, just right. in society. Like you know, oh, black people like to romanticize back in their day, and then like the youth sometimes feel like um, you know the elders don't care about them and they don't relate to them or they just feel like, oh, that was back then and it's not related to now. So I guess maybe we could talk about that a little bit more. Ooh, yeah. that's it. I mean, we got... <laughs> maybe how we resolve it right. too. Like, is there a way we, we can... I mean, again, we have to understand that the enemy's job is to further colonize us and to divide us. So we got to fight from anything telling us that we're actually that distant from each other. I think a lot of perceptions of the youth now... I mean, and as I'm getting, I mean, I'm about to be, you just made 30. I'm about to make 30 next year. So, I mean, it's not like, I mean, we're still young, but it's like, yeah, we're getting older. And you know, <laughs> when you talk to someone who's younger, you could just get an idea that they've been given, you know, a higher level of consumption, at least in terms of how they're perceiving. I think a lot of media is just done to just devalue how they exist, to just be more than what they are. And if they're African, you know, so much work is being done to just dislocate our memories about being African. Um, to understand how the relationship between producing and consuming are inexplicitly connected and, you know, not having that understanding. A lot of folks just are burned out. They know that they're being exploited. Like, I will say that there has been a lot of work, and I think more people are a bit more cognizant of issues of capitalism because we are seeing its final stage being revealed where there's a lot of work being done to just bypass that. But there is, there has been political education done. So I do think the youth has shown an effort of changing that dichotomy. But I know earlier on for me, especially if you're raised in a church, and that's my experience, I was raised in the church. So I had a lot to, to really understand in terms of like back in the day, in the 80s, even in the 90s, and there was a lot, there was a big emphasis. A lot of us were raised going to church all the time and having that, that line of, you know, this is right, this is wrong, heaven, hell, that's it. Anything that was gray or anything that was perceived to be sinful was just condemned. And so, of course, the emergence of, you know, hip hop and just kind of how the music industry took a hold. I mean, that, that, that's a whole nother rabbit hole of how that's had an influence of how people perceive themselves. So, you know, it's like, oh, back in our day, we weren't singing lyrics like we're Carter B and Megan Thee Stallion. Like, that's just, ooh, that's so dirty. And, you know, and it's like, well, that's not a new thing that's always been done. It's just like the industry has made it more profitable because they're packaging it another way. But uh, I think there's just so much done to just create that division. But I've talked to the older people when I was young and I understood anybody who has open to knowledge and is open to receiving. And also that's why we understand the importance of our ancestors. Like the ancestors, we transfer this knowledge to our kids so that that knowledge is maintained 
and so that we understand why we're in this fight and we understand why we have to to organize against the enemy so it's not like it's a it's a shock it shouldn't be a surprise in that in that way but i think if folks don't understand that we actually have if you're getting your information from the wrong source you're going to end up thinking that this generation is just corrupt when it's just like well the enemy is the same he's been the same in the 60s same in the 30s i mean since we've been on this plantation the enemy hasn't changed its uh you know, he's changed his uniform, but he's he got the same weapon. Exactly. And I think in this conversation, that's that we needs to be the focus in it. Whenever we speak with others, or others speak to us, whatever, it should be focused on the objectives, the enemy, and how do we, you know, uh, overthrow these systems that's oppressing our people, like, globally, right? Um, instead of just saying, oh, yeah, we do it better, we did it better, you guys just don't understand, or, oh, those old folks are still stuck in the old time, they don't understand us now, you know, so much so on, like, you yeah. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, but it, I got to mention uh, the selection of Barack Obama because I think that was an intentional thing that the enemy understood would capture a lot of folks who were, I was there. I, I walk with Martin Luther King. All they needed to see was a black Afro man, you know, who sung some Mel Green, who was kind of this smooth guy who didn't cause no problems, quote unquote. His only problem was the tan suit, you know, is what they were telling us. Like, oh, they getting, they going off Obama off for everything. You know why, huh? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Black. It's like, uh, his policies are <laughs> worse for Africans. They slam yeah. dunk you. They, 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 yeah. you've been bamboozled. You've been tricked. They, they installed exactly. a puppet just to, I remember having this conversation with a friend of mine recently who's much older than me. And I'm like, you know, she mentioned Barack Obama. I'm like, you know, honestly, Barack Obama is the enemy. He, he operates from the same will of any president of the United States. Just because he's the black face don't mean he changed anything. And but again, that was done so that there can be that. I think that was done also as a way to misrepresent or to show, oh, yeah, we can have you involved. You know, all of the things. It ain't about the people. It's about one person at advance. And then you just forget about, you know. The policies that were done to just suppress everybody else yeah exactly yeah just like every president any face behind there i don't care you know they're doing this whole identity politics it was obviously when the age of like neo-colonial rule so obviously you know they do identity identity reductionism in a sense where it's like oh yeah you know you have a black president or black mayor or african mayor i should say or african president and uh, yeah it's like you know african queer person took over this and you know and obviously those people are elements of the bourgeois but they petty bourgeois and then you know they're being propped up as a, as a means but obviously the underlying structure is still that these people will have to uphold imperialism neo-colonialism um you know patriarchy etc right like they're going to uphold these systems these institutions like they're not they're not putting these positions like the the state isn't like i don't know why people think things just happen off chance or when the state just moves like it's right. like oh yeah today we're going to do this like yeah, they're today, organized like, obviously like they're organized <laughs> they're not, they're they're gonna, know. yeah they're not gonna yeah. put nobody in place to overthrow themselves like who does that like even in a revolutionary organization we wouldn't <laughs> you know, we wouldn't prop up like no bourgeois person in our organization to like have them co-opt our movement right not purposeful or not purposely right so like no one intentionally does that at least if you're organized you don't do that right um so that has to be an element to it so uh i think also maybe you could just even tie that into the fact that hey like you know the more we have our youth organized and the more we have our elders organized organizations these these conversations can happen you know we could you know because even being in the aaprp you know we have meetings and we have to interact with our with our elders and yes. you know you may be in and different it's, circles, and it's, right and there might be conflict, but we, you know, that's why we have democratic centralism and we all talk it out. We argue if we need to so that we get to some resolution. And there is harmony in that. I mean, I think folks need to understand that even if there's that struggle and there's that, you know, talking it out, we need to get there so that we can come to a better understanding. Um, and it's just, as you said, once the youth and the elderly can connect and we can just communicate. You know, we wouldn't, there's nothing that's stopping us because we understand we have to do that because as we know, if the enemy's organized, we got to talk to folks from a different era, from a different time. And you realize, again, I don't even know how valuable that is to say, because it's not really that different, but there have been beautiful relationships that I can even give a shout out to Jamu and his daughter, Shakura. Their yeah. weekly podcast is amazing and they have a wonderful relationship and it's not based off of that bourgeois uh, you know, things that we celebrate are things that are divisive. Like we laugh to see people in arguments and people divided, making all this drama. You know, we think and it's not that there can't be uh, laughter in that, but we shouldn't think that that's the only way we can see ourselves. We can definitely 
communicate and understand from our ancestors and understand from the people who are doing the work right now that mm-hmm. those divisions don't have to exist. You can communicate in a way where the elderly understands, okay, this is what's going on. And this is, this is no different from, I mean, this is kind of like with music. I think that's the best, that's a really good example because a lot of, you know, that's what sampling, a lot of people are honoring people from taking their beat, remixing it, mm-hmm. doing whatever, or even just showing remnants of what another artist did through their music, kind of just like passing it on, but just changing it up, remixing it. All of those things have been done. Um, there are things of, none of it is like divided. Uh, but again, when you're talking to the system or if you're looking at the system, work has been done to show that we can't talk to the youth or that the youth, even what we see as youth right now, can't engage these conversations or can't understand yeah. that they're being oppressed. But any, that's a scientific law. I mean, it, it's, it's observable. Anything that can be observed can be understood. And kids can, yeah. and kids observe. They pay attention. I mean, they recognize, <laughs> they see what's going on. I don't know why folks act like they dumb. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> I remember the stuff that happened as a child. I don't know. Like, Me too, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah man I, even, even with uh now like maybe we could talk a little bit about i mean i think we kind of already did an episode on like social media but just maybe tying in like the 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 youth and social media right because i think that's a vital tool like you know um even us in the org you know me and you and other members who are you know i guess you could maybe slump us in and youth right um i guess it just all depends on people what what different metrics are they use to, to define what youth is whatever but um you know me you whatever or uh other members in the party have like you know present on social media and we post stuff and that even for me myself like you know uh it helps even recruit members even though you know i think it could be there's a lot of you know sometimes twitter could be accessible like really it really is accessible like <laughs> yeah. but, yeah. but i think anything can be weaponized and utilized you know in any way for revolutionary or bourgeois means and obviously we're trying to use it for revolutionary means to organize people so i think in that sense you know uh you know we, we may push party line on social media, whatever the case is. And then people turn around and be like, oh, wow, like I may want to join now, right? I have people DM me and stuff like that. Like, oh, you know, I may want to look into joining the APRP and so. So cause I think that maybe you could talk about that more, like the just the youth and social media and how it could be used to help push, you know, organizing and organizing work um, in a sense. Well, I mean, yeah, Twitter is definitely accessible. And here we are. Uh, using it because it's one of the most powerful ways you can communicate with people and I have seen again a lot of the work that is being done some of that is reflected on Twitter and you can definitely uh, involve yourself in those circles but you still gotta struggle sometimes and you know even reaffirming the party line you're not going to get people you're going to get bots you're going to get trolls you don't don't feed the trolls if you can't engage someone through DMs like that's I don't even like I don't do no like reactionary behavior like if you really want to know I'll, I'll i'll dm you some information and then we can talk on that level and then you know build further i think people have to realize that that's what it's about it's about connecting and if you want to connect to somebody you can't react through like just for no reason if you're not if you're reacting out of um just to dunk on them and to get ratio i mean or to be the ratio it's like what's the point in doing that you really want people to organize because Again, it's also the place where there are a lot of people doing the work of the enemy. It's a lot of ops and CIA agents on Twitter, too, that know exactly what language to use and how to divide further. So if the line is about organizing and the line is about getting through so that there can be some understanding, then, yeah, you got to maybe disagree on that. But it don't have to resort to the reactionary um, bullying that a lot of times happens on social media because because of also the element of being a star and being verified or being seen to have a higher audience or whatever, people chase that. They want to have the most likes, the most quote unquote engagement. When a lot of that engagement is built on, well, all of it actually, is built on a specific algorithm that any creator understands they have to commit to an algorithm because the moment you stop, the money stops. So like, it's not necessarily like people get on Twitter or TikTok or wherever else to just do it. You got to do it in a structured way. Um, and what better way to do that in an organized way? Um, and so, like, for as many people we got on Twitter, TikTok, Facebook, we could have in organizations if they understand that that's a more powerful weapon than social media because that's that was before. So, I mean, social media is just a tool to advance organization. It shouldn't be used as people feel like, oh, I'm organizing because I got a bunch of followers. I'm organizing because I got, yeah, you know, exactly. like, how many of those folks are actually involved in some process um, that's committed? Because, again, this is real, y'all. This is not like a game. Like this, this is for real about what they need to do to divide us. So like we got to be for real about how we're going to be 
politically organized to fight it because they are constantly showing us and giving us the, the means of feeling like we don't have to do anything when the work has been done and we can engage in this work because the younger you are, I mean, that's how they get you. They get you young. They want, they get us young with the songs, the jingles that we sang about capitalism, even the uh, sentiments that we, un- we see in our media are all co op like allegiance to the flag. Like allegiance, exactly, to the flag. They're like saying that whole, just remember, I remember like, oh, wow. And I remember it because, yeah, they told you young. It was a requirement. So that wasn't just an accident, that was intentional. Um, because before you know it, you're like, well, not all cops, you know, there's some good, good, good apples. And you start saying the stuff that they want you to say or thinking even again, like Obama or Kamala Harris or anyone that resembles a face of yourself is doing your work. Um, all of that information is done purposely. So, I mean, we have to understand that we can break, break, and break those chains through organizing and getting through. Yeah, exactly, man. It's. Yeah, and I think just just even that sentiment is like you know they get us at an er, at an early age, so we also have to do work to capture our people at an early at an early age too. Because you know, unfortunately, I can recite the pledge of allegiance. Thank God I don't do it. You know, I don't pledge yeah. allegiance, but, <laughs> no, <laughs> but I've been indoctrinated to you know to, it's been you know in me for years. You know, for what how long? Even the Star Spangled Banner. I mean, I mean, all those yeah. things are done. And you're always all unity. Everyone's gathered together, and you're all. <laughs> Pledging, <laughs> exactly. Like, yeah, the flag. Yeah, it's it's all intentionally done to uh, curve us. But imagine if we got our youth, like African youth, to just like you know memorize the party lines that we have. Right for us, it's a totally liberated and unified Africa and the scientific. Yeah. So like you just hey, hey what's the objective? Pan Africanism, totally liberated. Like that would be so. Right, like, exactly. And there that are would so... take it so much further. Yeah, right. Because there, that I gives you an objective. Right. That gives you an objective, and then that's the whole thing with social media too. Is that if you're just doing it for likes and it's really no objective you could say you're organized and whatever but even even though your organizing has to happen outside of twitter to social media like if you look at it dialectically yes you could use it as a tool but that shouldn't be the end all be all like after you get off exactly. social media you should actually be doing work because the, the work doesn't end and stop start because they could take it down in social media. we don't control the internet oh exactly I mean, oh this is, this is, we live in under fascism like george jackson told us a long time ago fascism is right here and, you know this that's the truth so <laughs> oh that's <laughs> so a good point like, Absolutely. Yeah. So like, you know, obviously, you know, while we're having our accounts as long as we have it, because who knows if they're going to take our account down or whatever, we should probably expect that at some point, depending on the lines you're pushing, um, you know, it should be utilized as a tool. So if you're on there, you're looking to, you know, while the meantime, your account is up and running or you have it going on or you have a following, whatever, you should be using it for an objective. Now, if you're just using it to say, oh, yeah, this is bad. This is good. Da, 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 point out flaws and stuff like that. But no call to action. It's just like, are you using it for oh, personal okay. page? Are you reactionary? Like, what's like what's, what's really going on? So I think everything should have a, a meaning and everything is political. You know, we've done an episode on that too. Watch that. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, everything is political. So in the sense that, uh, you know, everything has a uh, political meaning behind it. So if you're tweeting, it's not just you're just tweeting the tweeting. Like there's a there's a reason why you're doing it. I mean, there's a political agenda behind it, whether you know it or not. You so know it or, not. Um, or you're you're furthering your interests, whether you know it or not. So um, you know that's why you know for me and for others who are committed to to the work and try to use every tool we can possible is to utilize even social media as little as it seems or as crazy as co opted and the CIA is all over there or whatever um we can still try to use it because there's, there's still real people on the application too whether it's twitter ig tiktok whatever no, you to say hey join the organization or this is the ideology look more into this and so forth and so on and i'm seeing <laughs> thankfully i am seeing i mean maybe it's because i'm liking more things about organization and they're reflecting my life <laughs> <laughs> I could be a too, but still i'm seeing more folks understanding yeah you got to be organized like yeah. young people Organize yeah. themselves, like, and I'm seeing more young people doing the work studies and committing to a process, having an ideological line, um, and having that is just really important because, again, it gives you that structure and it it, it gives you that defense, it gives you that that weapon. And the, the further I've been, or the more I've been in this organization, you as well, you can. I mean, the fact that we're doing this podcast right now, when we when we first started, it was like, I don't know, like, how are we going to do this podcast? How are we going to even talk about <laughs> these topics? But the more you study, yeah. the more you read, and the more you work with other organizations, um, you see that this is not hard necessarily. It's not like you just have to understand why you're doing it. Like that exactly. call to action, we're doing it because we understand that there's an enemy. Capitalism is working overtime. It's got us beat. It's got us confused. It's got us divided. And what are ways we can improve our 
to get ourselves out of that division. Okay, we politically align ourselves with socialism. We understand that socialism is the, the system that we need and we got to fight for that because there's a struggle been, that's been waged and every advancement that we've made has been on the backs of our ancestors. We've never gained anything without bloodshed. So that alone is just enough reason where it's like, yo, I mean, just like watching Kwame Ture videos when he would, you know, and I enjoyed the episode you all did, but just that, I mean, again, after those speeches, people could clap all the time. And he was like, yeah, but are you organized? <laughs> you, you, are you organized? Like, are you like, what you yeah. doing to that was the call action for me it's like i had to think about it like what am i doing what what can i do what can i what can any of us say to our ancestors and to all of the things that have been done when we watch those awful i mean because every year they're reminding us that we were somehow you know abused or treated as the outcast in this country and they're going to always do that because they have to come up uphold white supremacy absolutely so we got to be reminded of that all the time um, so what is it about that reminder that doesn't, I mean, of course, they create movies with bourgeois notions to make it seem as if there was never really any fighting back and we all just stood still and we allowed it to take. But if we were really to examine it, we owe ourselves to doing something because our ancestors had to suffer under even harsher conditions. I mean, when I look at it like that, it's like, yo, I mean, yeah, I got to understand the importance of doing this work because the work we're going forward regardless um and we understand what whatever that looks like but yeah like as a young person and as someone who understands even as a young age even before i was like in this organization i, I did understand that i can learn a lot from those that came before me I, I can learn a lot from the people who are willing to give me that information and understand that i have something to say too because i was you know thankfully i had i wasn't those kids that wasn't a kid that was just told no you can't enjoy these conversations i had elders that involved me and in and let me see that I had something to offer. And I think we need more of that to continue this work. Yeah, man, that's so true, man. Like we need that, that line of communication. And then luckily for me, I think I was like that as, as, a, as a youth too, as a young, well, I guess you can still say I'm youth, but as a younger person, <laughs> yeah, as you say, I was, was receptive to what the elders had to say. Um, it felt like the yeah, elders had something something to teach um but i think you always hit your rebellious age at, at some point in your life where you're like, yeah oh, i hit it of course <laughs> it's like yo but I, I understood still then the dialectical understanding is never was like oh i can't learn nothing from the youth i can learn from anyone who has the information that are willing to collaborate in that receiving end like it's not like there are these divisions unless you're taking it from the media the media tell you that but generally you know no i've never seen it as an impossible uh fact and we know that it's not impossible um, so that's why we just need to engage further and just do the work so that we can. Exactly. Do the work. Yeah, man, the work has to be done and the youth play an instrumental, instrumental part in that, you know, so, you know, we can't detach them and say, you know, they're young or they're too young. I feel like you're never too young to join the organization. No. In my, in my mind, man. It's like, if we man, can remember the Pledge of Allegiance early we, we, and not even know what we're saying. Um, we exactly. can say the right thing at a young age and still not really know what we're saying and still be right. You know, like if a kid yeah, is, yeah. I'm sure that there are jingles like in the uh, Pioneer Institute and the AAPRP, I'm sure that there were, and I've seen, I want to engage more and I'm, we're going to leave references of youth centered political work that, you know, because there are songs that describe who Marcus Garvey and Malcolm X. Like I've seen, I've read books where they talk about these place cards that you can get teaching you the history of African history. So there's work that's been done out there to uh, gain okay. information. Um, we just got to engage in it and, and find the importance of it and understand that's the replacement. That's what we need as opposed to just the reacting to the stimuli. Um, exactly. Yeah, because political education for the young folks, man, that could go, you know, because then they're talking to their circles and they may have little, um, you know, younger siblings that they could talk to. So it's going to trickle down, right? So then that's how we create a movement that's how we slowly like sow the seeds of revolution and things of that nature and overthrowing these systems you know people like to talk about revolution like it's just some random act like it's just going to happen out of the thin sky and like someone's going to come and save us you know another country right because yeah we have to build it it's a process scientifically it's a scientific process right um and that starts with the youth right and it starts with uh you know political education and you know uh politicizing the youth and things of that nature so um, Cause they're the ones that are gonna take over at a certain period of time, and man, like to be honest, I know it's funny because growing up, I'm pretty sure you heard this too. Growing up, you heard this so much, like 
oh, time is, I mean, uh, life is so fast. Like, you're going to wake up and you're going to be 20. Right. I'm like, no, I got all the time. What are you right. talking about? I'm like 13, <laughs> I'm 15. Yeah. Shut, shut, yeah. shut your old self up, man. I ain't listening to you, bro. Like, and then, you know, I woke up, I was like, oh, I'm 21. All right, I'm 25. Oh, oh, right, right. Yeah. All right. I'm, right, exactly. <laughs> oh, <laughs> like, oh, the train oh, is like, moving. Yeah, so the, the train don't stop. So as much as you think that, you know, you feel like you're going to be young forever, you're not. So you always have to give the game to to the young people. You always have to, you know, involve them in the struggle at, any, at, all, at all times, by all means. Yeah. So, uh, right. Once again, the same thing's going to happen to you as much. Man, I was changing my little brother's diapers, bro. Like, I remember, like, Yeah, I think my nephew's diaper, too. They're all like 20, 21. Exactly. You know I mean? so, yeah. <laughs> no, I was like, oh, man, that's how I am talking to my nephew because my nephew's literally 13. He's going to be 13 this year. And wow. I mean, I'm proud of him because he, I, you know, of course, I'm talking to him all the time about politics, uh, talking about capitalism, yeah. all of that. And he has an engagement for it. He's understanding. And I'm sending him some stuff so he can get involved because, again, I wish I was giving this stuff at 12 years old. Like if I was yeah. like, I mean, and they have been Karen. Let's give a shout out again to Jamila. She was reading, uh, what she said she was reading like uh she was reading Marx, Lennon, Marx I think. and Lennon yeah. like at 13, 14. Like yeah. I wish I was reading that at 13, 14. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, I probably, to, somebody tried to give me that, but I ain't gonna lie, but somebody tried to give me that's capital at like 13. I probably threw it in their face. Like, what do you think? Like, I want to watch cartoons. <laughs> what are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> like, like, what? Know, that, Even if I didn't understand it, like just to be introduced with those concepts, like that's the thing. If you're given that early, even if you don't know what you're reading. You know, after mm -hmm. a while, when you eventually join an organization, it'll be like, oh, because then you can talk about it and just have that yeah. further development of it. But yeah, like if you get that information early, that's why, again, if it comes early, really, you can really start the work and get beyond just that placement of, oh, I can't do it. Because then what happens is the system gets you long enough and you beat up by the time you're old. You're like, oh, I, I mean, I, I'm always working like I can't do that. Like all of the excuses are made then because it's like. You've lost the will, but as young people, you got that will. You're passionate. You have more energy to sort of like just supply whatever need you have because it's just there and you're not really attached to it as well. Like that's another thing about youth is like the non-attachment. Like you don't really stay focused on the, you know, because, you know, I don't know. It's just like this energy rush, but you're yeah. processing it in a way that can be built into a solid foundation that's, you know, that can lead organizations or to start organizations or to join it. In the organization so i mean it's always like it's just good to have that early and so it's important to have it because again if you have that early it'll it'll grow into something that'll be able to further combat the system exactly and you know that's that's what we're trying to do man we're trying to win you know and when it's not going to happen like I, like i said it's not going to happen just by us wishing and hoping and saying things and trying to be dogmatic and, you know, doing all these other things that you may see people do online or in person. It's like, it, it has to be done through organizing and organizing elements in our society. So, so yeah, man, and politicizing people with political education, obviously that all ties in with organizing. So, um, cause yeah. in your organization, you have some type of political education. Um, so yeah. Um, yeah, I guess is there, uh, anything else you want to Get organized, uh, young, and I believe the children <laughs> are Teach them well. When I say people well, we're talking about a political wellness, a political yeah. education that would uh, lead the way to show them the guidance of, you know, why we're doing this fight. So that's all I have to say, y'all, just continually. And also happen to the other podcasts we have um, from the AAPRP, from Forward Ever. There's the um, Our Ancestors' Voices. Yeah. Uh, Jamu has his with um, his daughter Shakira. Yeah, that's the our ancestors' voices. Oh yeah, yeah there we go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm missing someone else. Oh, um, but, I know oh, the AAPRP New Mexico chapter has yes. one has their has their session too as well. I believe on Thursdays. Um, hopefully, you know if I'm wrong, don't kill me on the side and the rest of the New Mexico <laughs> chapter. <laughs> um, the point is, we're there are a lot of things you can listen to online of. There's a Forward Ever podcast as well. I believe it's on Spotify. Yeah, Forward Ever is on Spotify. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So we say yeah, Forward, y'all. Yeah. Forward Ever. Backwards Never. Forward Ever. Backwards Never. Appreciate y'all for joining. Catch y'all next week.